Well, then we're given triangle ABC with vertices A, B, and C. So A is at 0, 0. You can see that right here. A is at 0, 0. B is at 3, 0. And C is at 0, 4 in the XY plane. So it's two dimensional. Which of the following matrix transformations represents a dilation of triangle ABC with center 0 and a scale factor of 3? So leaving the center at 0, 0 makes this dilation fairly straightforward because we can really just focus on our scale factor of 3, just meaning that we have to multiply both x and y by 3. So which of these will do that? Well, it's, it's interesting because this is for the praxis. 0061 exam, and this is on, on matrices. So here, all we need to do, we'll have a calculator. If we wanted to, we could plug this matrix in, multiply by these transformations, and see what, what happens. And we can plot the points, 0, 0, 3, 0, 0, 4, see how they're mapped, and see what makes the most sense. Fortunately, we don't really need to do that for this one. It's not that nasty of a, of a um, transformation problem, right? We've got three points. 0, 0, 3, 0, 1, 2, 3, and 0, 4, 1, 2, 3, 4. So there's our triangle. And we've got to reflect it, reflect it, um, excuse me, have a scale factor of 3. So the total distance is here of our new shape should be 3 times longer. And to do that, we should multiply, I think, by D, right? This makes the most sense because when you're multiplying, let's just start it up. 3, 0, 0, 3, we take that, multiply it by our matrix, right? If you think about matrix multiplication, you're going to take this row and multiply it by this column and add it up to get the first digit. So 3 times 0 plus 0 times 0. 3 times 0 plus 0 times 0. And then the next number would be here. 3 times 3, which is 9, 0 times 0, which is 0, and you add them up, so it's just 9. And then 3, 0 times 0, 4, and we get 0. So our, our, our new numbers here are going to be, let me, let me get rid of this. Okay, we have 3, 0 times 0, 0, that's just 0. And then next we had 9, and then 0. And then now, in the next, do the same thing in the next row, row to column. So 0 to 0, 3 to 0, 0. In the next column, we have 0 to 3 is 0, 3 to 0, 0. And then, so we're, we're still staying at 0, 0 here. Last, we have 0, 3 times 0, 4, we get 0, 12. Now, if we want to plot this, we have 0, 0, right? Um, 9, 0 all the way down here, that makes sense. This would be 3 times longer than 3, it's 9. And then up here we have 12. Right? That makes sense too because first we had 4, now we have 12. That's a scale factor of 3. D is the correct answer. And you can, of course there are 3's in all of them, but if you were to multiply this one out, for example, let's just do 1 here. 3, 3 times 0, 0, 0. Okay? But then 3, 3 times the next we get 9 times and then we get 12 in the last. And already you can see this big shift because 3, 3 times 0, 4 is just 3 times 0, 0, plus 4 times 3. I'm just matching these up. 4 times 3 plus 3 times 0 is 12. And now we have this, this new setup of points. And you can always see right away that this doesn't make any sense. We don't want that to happen, right? Because all of a sudden... We have uh, 0 something, 9 something, and then 12 something. So we're def like it goes right up the screen, so we're kind of turning this triangle around. So that's a scale factor of 3. Okay. For which of the following transformations will the magnitude of a vector be unchanged? So by magnitude, they mean, in a sense, distance, right? We have a, a vector here. If I make it longer, I am altering altering the, the length of the vector. Right? So the magnitude of the vector really depends on its length, not so much its direction. Right? That's that's the idea of magnitude.
So, so magnitude is length, not direction. So, in this first one, you're rotating the vector by an angle A. Okay, well, if I have a vector here, and I rotate it around, I can keep it the same length, I'm just changing its direction. So that, that one will leave the vector be unchanged. And next, we have translation of the vector by h units to the right and k units up. So if I, let's say I have this blue line right here, well, if I shift it to the right this way and then up this way, I'll just get the same line over here. So that leaves the line intact. But dilating a vector with the center of the origin and scale factor of m, well, that's going to change the length of the line. Stuck at the origin, let's say my, my length here is, I don't know, 4. If I double that, I'm changing the magnitude to 8. So 3 is not an option. So only 1 and 2 will leave the vector unchanged. Okay, now we're, we're dealing with subtraction with matrices. And really all we need to do is highlight the corresponding parts. So we have finding A, B, C, D if this matrix versus this one equals this one. So we A minus 3A is negative 8. So, and we might want to keep track of these. A minus 3A is equal to negative 8. And then keep going. 5 minus 2C. 5 minus 2C equals 7. 4B, just keep going around here. 4B minus negative 6 equals B. And then D minus negative 2D equals 9, right? So now I'm going to simplify this a little bit. We have A minus 3A equals negative 8. Well, this actually should be lowercase a, so it's just 1a minus 3a, and I can simplify that. If you have 1a, you're taking 3a away, you have negative 2a equals negative 8. So a equals negative 8 divided by negative 2, which is 4. And so now we know the value of a. And then to find the value of b, we can solve the next equation. Excuse me. But oh, I can go any order here. I'm going to, I think, go with the second equation. 5 minus 2c equals 7. Well, what does c equal? Well, then, two, negative 2c equals 7 fifths, right? And what is that equal to? Well, 7 divided by 5, 5 goes into 7 once, and there are 2 fifths left over. So, negative 2c equals 1 and 2 fifths, or 1.4 and c equals 1.4 divided by negative 2 okay we're asked to find the values of a b c and d and i think i made them nope that's okay yeah 5 minus 2c is is 7 okay so i did yeah okay so negative basically negative 1.4 over 2 okay so what does b equal well b is 4b plus 6 equals b. Okay, well, I'm going to take 4b from both sides. I'm going to get negative 3b equals 6, and divide by negative 3 on both sides, and b equals negative 2. And then d, what's that? Our last equation right here. d minus negative 2d is d plus 2d, or 3d equals 9, and d equals 3. So when you're adding or subtracting, you could just break these break these matrices into their corresponding components, and then just plug them into this formula of this first value minus the second equals the third. Okay, in general, with respect to matrix multiplication on the set of n by n matrices containing elements that are real numbers only, which of the following properties does not hold? Closure. Well, that, that more or less means that if you're working with the matrices, right, and you're adding, subtracting, multiplying, or, or whatever, you're, you're, you're not getting outside of the world of matrices, right? And that's true. We are working with closure, working with real numbers. Uh, the associated property says, of course, that A plus B, right, if we added those first and then added C, it would equal another combination like 
b plus c first, and then plus a. And that works in matrices, that's okay. We, we could try that out, but I want to leave that to you. The distributive property definitely works. Think about the way we multiply matrices. Right, if we have x, y times 1, 0, 0, 1, we take, right, oops, flip it around. So if we had 1, 0, 0, 1 times x, y, we are taking, we're distributing the whole time. We're taking this row times this column, right, and then this row times that column. So we're distributing these values, and that works. What doesn't work is commutativity. And as you get more practice with matrices, you realize, for example, matrix A times B certainly does not always equal B times A. So in, in general, matrix, matrix multiplication is not commutative. Oh, and I should say, sorry, the associated property, we're doing multiplication here. Same idea, A times B and then times C would be equal to A times and then B times C. And this actually does hold, right? We're not really changing the order so much, we're just changing the grouping. Um, okay, so, and here we have a triangle, ABC has three vertices, 3, negative 1, negative 5, 7, and 2, negative 4, and we could, of course, graph that out if we wanted to, just to get a picture of it, a quick sketch, 3, negative 1, maybe 1, 2, 3, negative 1, that's right there, negative 5, 7, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and then up 7, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, way over here, and then 2, negative 4, right down here. So we have this triangle, let's see how good my drawing is here, almost looks like a right triangle. But our goal here is to take that triangle and then reflect it over the y-axis. So I guess we would get something like, something like, this, hold on, four, five, up here, okay, something like that. Now, if, you, if we're dealing with a transformation that we are feeling comfortable about on the test and we're not really sure which one to pick, use the calculator to, to actually plot these original points out and then either plug in the operations, you can do this all on your, your graphing calculator, or just think about what you want to look like and try the matrix multiplication to see if it gives you the reflection you want. You should get a triangle, something similar to this, right? Triangle A, B, C prime. It should be, look almost just like that. Okay, so let's, let's just think about which one makes the most sense. Well, what happens to a point when you're reflecting on the y-axis, just going from here to here, or vice versa, from here to here? We're flipping the x values on all these points to flip them over the y-axis and that goes in both directions for any point along the way and, and the only one that does that here is this first one this is going to flip our x values if we think about it right this row times this column is the negative one multiplied by the negative three that's going to reverse our values let's try it negative one zero and it's zero right here will cancel out the second number this first point will become negative three right, plus zero, so negative three is, the x value is going to be switched, then later on we're going to take this row times this column and this y value will remain the same because we're taking zero times three which is zero, plus one times negative one, right, this one won't change anything, so this is our answer right here, and if you want to I'll leave it to you to think about these other reflections, uh, transformations, but d is a reflection over the y axis because we're a reflection over the x-axis because we're flipping the y-values. Okay, and I think one more maybe? Yes. Um, so here we have, this is written in a format uh, where the, we have just rows written out. So for A, we have 0, 2, and then 1, 3. And for B, we're given negative 2, 3, and then 2, 0. They want to know, well, what is the value of B times A? So an order is important. So we have negative 2, 2, 3, 0, that's B, times A, 0, 2, 1, 3. What do we do? We take the rows and multiply them by the columns and then add up the values. So we have negative 2, right, times 0, plus 3 times 1. 
that's going to be our first value in our matrix. And what do we have next? Well, negative 2, 3 times 2, 3. So negative 2 times 2 is, is negative 4, plus 9, oops, plus 3 times 3. I'll just write that. Plus, let me write this down so we don't lose track. Negative 2 times 2 plus 3 times 3. And then now we take on the next row. We have 2, 0. Right, 2 times 0, which is 0, plus 0 times 1, which is 0. So 2 times 0 plus 0 times 1. And then we have 2, 0 times 2, 3. So 2 times 2 is 4. Right? Oops. Better write the form before we multiply it. 2 times 2 plus 0 times 3 is 0. So 0 times 3. And now we just rewrite the, the matrix. Here we have 4 plus 0, or 4. Here we have negative 4 plus 9, or 5. Here we have 0 plus 3, just 3. And here we have 0 plus 0. So that is the value of BA. And just to confirm that the order matters, you could try AB to see what type of matrix you get from that. All right, I hope that helps.